<laughs> there we go. All right. Uh, I think that should all be good. I think everything's working now, mostly. Mm, how you doing? Happy time of day to you. It's morning here, but it's whatever time it is, you know, near you, uh, near you. Uh, Aloha from Phoenix, Arizona. I don't know that's what they say in Phoenix, Arizona, but I appreciate it. Uh, Super Bowl Sunday. Oh, I have to say, I'm sorry, Super Bowl Sunday. Can't say Super Bowl, otherwise the police will come or whatever. Um, Colin G, how you doing? Fungazi, good morning. How you doing? Drizzly, uh, Washington, D.C. It is gray here, but getting slightly brighter. I've had to change the um, settings on the camera a little bit uh, uh, since I started getting this all set up. Um, Jeff, how you doing? I'll be in Indianapolis in April. No, August. One of those that starts with an A. I'll be there for a Gen Con, of course. Me painting dad. Good afternoon from Dusseldorf. How you doing? Dragonfire. Good morning. Uh, Edinburgh, Scotland. We've got some Warcry cultists on my desk today. Nice. I hope they don't mess stuff up too much because they seem like they could be kind of, you know, destructive. Uh, coastal New uh, uh, North Carolina. I'm like Newcastle? No, that's not right. North Carolina. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon from Munich, Germany. Good morning from sunny Mexico City. How you doing? Sun would be nice. We've not really been having that a lot lately here. Um, morning from Virginia, painting some Shermans today. Wonder what I'll use them for. Who is to say? I don't know. That's a good question. It's already getting a little bright again. That's too dark. The downside to this variable ND filter that I've got on the camera now is I'm constantly messing with it. So that's, you know, anyway. Um, Let's see here. Good morning from, I'm just going to say Mexico, because I don't think I can pronounce the word before that. Uh, Tal Tlaxcala? Uh, I don't think I got that right. Uh, Northeastern Connecticut, Maryland, how you doing? Antwerp. Uh, coastal Alabama, Sterling, Sweden, hello from Wisconsin, how you doing? Uh, Pittsburgh, crazy weather, jacked up my sinuses, so I couldn't go into work this morning. hope everything is doing well, working on my Necrons. Yeah, uh, the... Um, uh, yeah, pollen and stuff like that has been messing with my eyes on and off the last couple of days, so I might look a little puffy. <laughs> um, Clearwater, how you doing? Colorado, Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. If you look at that term there, that word, that's how you pronounce it, is Oconomowoc. It's, it, it looks hard to say, but Oconomowoc is actually quite easy to say, just FYI. Being a fellow Wisconsinite, you know. Uh, Townsville, QLD, how you doing? Uh, good morning, Adam. Have you considered going to Nemo with the Hive Scum guys in 2025? I was invited to go this year, 2024, and I wanted to go. The problem was, was that it was the weekend directly after LVO. So I was at LVO, and I was like, can I do two, sh like, go, go to one side of the country on one weekend and the other side of the country on the next weekend? I wish that there was a little bit more space in between them, and I hope maybe in 2025 there will be. Um, but guys, I would like to go for sure. It sounds like they uh, had a great time. I was listening to the podcast that they recorded just before Nemo yesterday while I was painting. So I got I got a little break and I got to paint for a while. But otherwise, I've been working mostly this weekend. Um, um, you look like somebody that needs a hefty, cu hef hefty cup of coffee. Well, luckily, I have one. So that's good. But yeah, I am a little. Anyway, uh, Overcast Houston, how you doing? What about the next kill team? Share your psychic talents with the rest of us. Oh, I will. I will. Uh, Rockton, Illinois. Wakanda MCP terrain today. Nice. Brisk 14 degrees in northern North Ogden, Utah. Ogden, Ogden, Utah. Uh, it's 28 here Fahrenheit. Morning, uh, working on terrain for Frostgrave. Chilly day here in West Texas. Nice. Athens, Greece. Oh, cool. Greens from Ottawa, trying some Vallejo crackle medium and chipping medium this morning. Not a lot of success, but a lot of fun. Do think I need to plop it on them? Yeah, crackle medium specifically, or crackle paint, needs to go on pretty thick if you want it to crackle. Uh, if you just put it on thin, it's there's not enough there to do whatever it is that makes it crackle. But if you put it on thick and then you have to let it wait for like a really long time to dry, then yeah, that that does that does help a whole bunch. Uh, as far as chipping medium, I've never had luck with it. Um, 
yeah, I don't know why. I've I've also tried using the hairspray and salt thing, and I used it on a piece of terrain once, and I really didn't like what it what it did. So I've repainted, I've reprimed it. I haven't repainted it, but I have reprimed it. Um, yeah, I need to try to get better at that. I think is probably what has to happen. Uh, Kill Team 4E, it's getting up there. Is it 4th edition? I mean, I guess technically, I mean, so they've they've had Kill Team around for a long time, but it always used to just be like a little add-on book, and you still had to have a codex, and you still had to have the regular instructions, but it was just the add-on book. Standalone Kill Team technically started in 2018, so that was what we would call 1st edition if we're talking about standalone Kill Team, and then there was 2021, which I guess we would call 2nd edition, so technically I guess this would be 3rd edition coming up this summer. Um, good morning from a soon-to-be-cold Saskatchewan. Always fun to say Saskatchewan. Uh, Valleyfield, Quebec, how you doing? Um, let's see here. Rainy Tennessee, good, uh, good time of day from a showery Surrey, UK. Any news on a Playmate for Rex? Ooh. Um, so we went to the shelter yesterday. For those of you that don't know, we got a new cat about a month and a half ago, maybe not even quite, a month and a week ago. And his name is Rex, and he's adorable. Um, he is also insane, uh, specifically in the mornings. Uh, again, one of the reasons I probably look tired right now is because, yeah, he got us up at 5.30, just jumping off of furniture. Like, I've had to, you know, I've had to t take everything off of my dresser because otherwise he just jumps on top of it and just scatters crap everywhere. And he's just insane in the mornings. He's just a crazy person. And so we've talked to the cat behaviorist, uh, and, and stuff like that from the shelter. And, uh, everybody's just like, well, he probably needs a friend. And I'm like, well, there's three other cats here he could be friends with, but they don't like him because he is crazy. So, um, we looked at another cat, uh, tomorrow. So I guess we're going to try to solve the problem by adding more cats. <sighs> we'll see, I guess. I don't know. This new cat is an orange cat. His name is George. Um, he's allegedly one and a half, but Rex was allegedly three, and that's not possible. Um, so yeah, we'll see how it goes, I guess. I don't know. Uh, we may get him next week, and uh, we'll see. It's going to be something. Um, let's see here. Building paper walls and questioning my life decisions outside of Chicago. Sure, <laughs> I can understand that. Got my first Malifaux squad uh, a bit taken aback by the diminutive, diminutive size. They're not, like chunky big huge soldier dudes like in you know in most of um uh, 40k i suppose there is that let me see the pollen is messing with my eyes already a bit this morning um yeah they're a little bit more what you would call true scale i suppose afternoon from puckle church in the uk busy sticking together bizzle dwarfs for king of war nice painting terrain watching a little football in northern carolina a little tiny football it's fun that puppy bowl maybe i don't know um why can't I understand that Krylon spray primer is the same as a hobby spray? Is it right? Uh, why I can't Why can't I understand that Krylon spray primer is the same as a hobby spray? I would generally, if you're going to look for a primer, I would almost always go with a non-hobby spray primer, um, unless you're going through an airbrush. Airbrush, totally different story. Then I'm going to tell you to use a you know something like, you know, well for me personally lately it's been. Um, I really like the uh, Army Painter Black air, airbrush primer, uh, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping they start making more colors, you know, like you know, blues and greens and reds and stuff like that to match their other rattle cans and such. The rattle cans are fine, I guess, from them. The, my problem is that I don't live in rattle can country. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it, I rattle can uh, time is fine about th four months out of the year, sometimes maybe less, sometimes more. Um, we've had a pretty mild winter, but it's still not been great for for rattle can. Um, nonetheless, so that's why I'm hoping, you know, that, that they start to make more colors, uh, in their primers, but, um, you know, Vallejo, I think also makes primers for airbrush still. They're they call them something weird, surface primers, but they're airbrush primers. Um, and then of course, uh, uh Monument Hobbies does and other people do, but, um, but yeah, so there's, uh, stuff like that. But if you're looking for, uh, a rattle can, then in most situations, I'm going to go to like the auto parts store and pick up like uh, Krylon, Duplicolor, uh, 
rust-oleum, those types of things. You don't want the 2X usually. If you're doing terrain, it's probably not so bad. But if you're spraying models, what they, I think rust-oleum has this 2X where it's like, oh, it's, you know, it's, it's nice and thick and it goes on and you don't have to spray twice or whatever. And you're like, yeah, but I kind of don't want it to be too thick because I'm trying to prime a little tiny skeleton or whatever. And I don't want to fill in his rib cage, you know, that kind of stuff. So, but again, for terrain, it's usually not too bad. But for models, I would look for a normal, like a nice sandable auto primer. For years, I used Duplicolor Black Sandable Auto Primer and it worked great. Um, and then I started using... Now, it doesn't always have to be primer, frankly. If it's a very ultra matte finish, that can work real well too. I've been using both Krylon and um, Rust-Oleum, uh, the camouflage colors, and just been using them as like a primer and also as a base coat for years, and they work great. But it's because they're they're designed for camo, they're an incredibly matte finish, which gives them a nice tooth so that paint that you put over the top of them, you know, holds on real well. That's kind of the whole point. If you put something on uh, that's real, especially if it's glossy, it can be hydrophobic, which means that it's the, the paint's going to go on and bead up because it won't, you know, it won't have anything to grab onto. Um, let's see here. Cloudy Kentucky. No, that's Connecticut. That's what I meant. Uh, good morning from Massachusetts. Uh, Denmark, how you doing? Um, good morning from a steam kitchen, homemade pasta sauce. Uh, cooking to make lasagna later. Nice. We haven't had lasagna around here in a while. Hmm. We should have lasagna again soon. It's good stuff. Good evening from Vietnam. How you doing? Uh, St. Louis, cleaning up nids, getting them ready for primer and painting. Nice. Uh, morning from Ohio, oh, Idaho. Good morning from a murky Junction City, Wisconsin. Yeah, it's maybe getting a little brighter here. Um... Cleaning my hobby space this morning, hoping that leads to airbrushing some Imperial Guard proxies later. Nice. I just got some Imperial Guard proxies as well. Where did I put them? I think they're in a drawer here. I have a lot of drawers. Ah. Yeah, I got uh, or ordered some stuff from Cromlec recently, and it finally showed up. I got a whole baggy full of uh, resin bits and stuff like in here and there's some kind of sort of counts as primaris type uh, body armor type dudes you know and power armor i mean and there's also some folks that could look kind of like guard but they don't look like a like they're they're guard shaped right but they're not like a knockoff they're just you know i don't think i can show them to you very easily here um and i can't get the bag open here we go um this guy, the most of them are attached to, because when you get poured resin and stuff like that, they're usually attached to like the sprue and stuff like, whoops, but this guy's sprue came off. I see, I can, yeah, right there. It's not going to autofocus. It's a manual focus lens. Um, I don't know. Right there. I don't know. It's just like a, you know, torso and legs and um, you can put whatever kind of arms on there, whatever kind of head on there. Uh, I got some of those. Like I said, I got some other heads. I got just a bunch of different stuff. Um, came all the way from Poland. Took a while, but, you know, came all the way from Poland. I ordered that Cromlech stuff predominantly because I just recently, when I was in Vegas, I bought some Cromlech stuff from a local store um, that had a booth there at the Las Vegas Open. So I was like, I don't know, it just reminded me of that. And so I went and looked at their website again and was like, hmm, and there we go. Um, let's see. I'm going to sit down and paint some shortly. Nice. Good morning. Allentown, Pennsylvania. How you doing? Now that song's in my head. Um, let's see here. Oconomowoc, Wyawega are two of my favorites to mess with the non-Wisconsinites. Oh yeah. Uh, Kakana, which looks odd, uh, Hawaiian. We, for years, we've made the joke that the Kakana is actually pronounced Kau Kauna, and it's from a lost tribe of Hawaiians who ended up in Wisconsin. Um, like that's, you got to get really lost on a boat if you end up in Wisconsin and you're coming from uh, Hawaii. But yeah, there's all kinds of crazy, um, you know, Native Native American names uh, of cities here um, in, in Wisconsin. But Oconomowoc, Waiwiga, Waukesha, um, just lots of different ones like that. Those are the, those are the ones that are just like kind of crazy. I used to work as a security guard at a diaper plant um, for um, a company that makes Pampers, I think. I don't know. Anyway, Kimberly Clark and I worked there. And so we would get 
and this is again in the like 90s. So we would get a lot of CB calls, you know, citizens band radio uh, from truckers who were trying to figure out like where they're going. And they knew that when they got close to the diaper plant, they could switch to some channel and that we would be monitoring it. And they would ask, and or also sometimes they would come in with a map. They'd pull over and come in with a map and they'd be like, I'm trying to find Akamakwaka. Ak- I'm like, Akanamawaka. And they're like, uh, yeah, I guess. And um, yeah, so. Just got in from cleaning the drive. Perfect timing for the stream and working on some 15 millimeter sci-fi for Star Grunt 2. Nice. Not see much other than 28 millimeter from you. Thoughts on smaller scales? I'm not a big fan of smaller scales. I'm not against them. I'm not like mm, smaller scale. I just, it's not, I, I don't, personally, I don't prefer, I don't prefer a paint, to paint that small. I think it's hard for me to do. Um, I did play Flames of War for a, for a hot second back about 10 years ago. Um, and it's getting brighter again. I'm going to try to turn it. There we go. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just painting people at that at that particular scale is not enjoyable to me. I think that's the problem. Like the tanks were fun to paint. I enjoyed painting the little tanks, like you know, like little M4 Shermans and stuff like that. Were like you know, a little bigger than like like uh, Hot Wheels or, or or Matchbox cars or whatever. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, that was that's the thing though is that for me that scale is not as enjoyable to paint. I think, and that's why I kind of stick away from it to most for the most part. Uh, painting Mantic Firefight in the UK. Thanks for keeping me company. Absolutely. Absolutely. Having a break from painting is visiting DC from the UK and following you for a long time on YouTube. I really like your mature vo- viewpoint on a uh, hobby. Well, I appreciate that. I, it's, it's, it, I, I am old. It is true. Uh, but yeah, I just think that it's, I don't, I think it's just important to like, I don't know, sometimes look at certain things from like more than one viewpoint and also not to just like constantly like freak out and fly off the handle and try to make as much, you know, um, drama as possible and that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's also important for us as hobbyists specifically and enjoyers of the hobby um, to also not take it so crazy seriously. You know what I mean? Like there's no reason to get into a fight online with somebody because they think Magnus did nothing wrong or they don't think that or whatever the deal is. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's, it's all made up stories about, um, you know, uh, uh, space people or, or, you know, people who fantasy people, whatever. Um, yeah. Vince spoiled your next game. He said proactive described it. And it clearly means that robot squirrels fighting Cthulhu to proactively stop the apocalypse. I don't know about either of those things. Proactive. I I mean, aren't all games proactive? I guess unless you're just like tabletop games. Like video games can be reactive. Um, video games can just be passive. You know, like there's those ones that where you just like every once in a while you push a button on the screen and then some stuff happens. And then it, what do they call them? Like... Um, there's something battlers, uh, like not, uh, I don't know, like passive battlers or something like that, where there's just like, you just, I've seen f- friends playing them and I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm in a battle. I'm like, you haven't touched the screen in like two minutes. They're like, well, you know, it's not really the game. That's not how it's done. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, I don't know that that spoils anything to be perfectly frank. Hey. There is a cat battle going on outside the door. I closed the door to the sunroom because otherwise they were all going to be up here on my having a fight on my head, probably. Um, but yeah. Taking out mold lines and bits from Kasserkin and Archon kill teams may work for Majestic 13 and Space Station 02. Hoping new kill team edition doesn't hurt me. Sure, I can understand that. Uh, Mosquito is a fun one in Wisconsin as well. True. Uh, spending a nice warm Green Bay winter morning painting stormtroopers for Space Raiders. Nice. Uh, Germany, how you doing? Ontario, uh, Chilean, living in Dublin. Oh, nice. There is a city in Wisconsin called New London that during St. Patrick's Day, they officially changed the name of the city to New Dublin. Like they even changed the sign and stuff like that and all that and everything. And then, yeah, then there's a, there's a lot of Irish folk that live there in New London from what I understand. New London, Wisconsin. Uh, good morning from Quebec. I'm currently working on Frosted Bellicor. Mm, Frosted Bellicor. Those are be- really good with milk, um, as it turns out. 
All problems can be solved by adding more cats. Mm, gosh, I hope. Uh, but we will see. Um, then you need to get a third cat in case the, these two don't hit it. I mean, and then you need to get gorillas and then eventually, hopefully, yeah, it's like from the Simpsons. You are the best kind of cat dad. Well, I hope, I hope I, that's, you know, I hope that it works. I hope it helps. doesn't sound like it's helping right now, but you know, obviously George isn't here yet. Um, getting back in the painting groove again, after a few months break, painting, uh, S C E, um, uh, soul, no. What the heck is that? It's not Flesh Eater Quartz. It's, I can't remember what SCC is with uh, black and gold rather than red and teal. Can't decide on the last one. I can't remember what SCE stands for. Hmm. It's too many uh, 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 abbreviations. We keep adding dogs. I have 120 pounds of them lying on me right now. That's, that's a lot of dogs. Or it's one real big dog. I also know how it happens Running from a sunny but freezing SoCal. It is getting brighter here again. <laughs> um, any thoughts on Song of Ice and Fire Tactics? Is that the skirmish version? I'm interested in checking it out, I guess. Um, I'm not interested in regular Song of Ice and Fire because, again, it's rank and flank, and I'm just not a rank and flank fan, generally. But the whole concept of it being a little bit more skirmishy um, is interesting to me. There's another company. I think it's the company that makes the Batman miniatures game that's also got a Game of Thrones skirmish game coming out at roughly the same time. I could be wrong on it being the same time, and I could be wrong on it being the Batman skirmish people, but I don't I don't know. Um, nonetheless, it looks like there's going to be some skirmish. The tactics thing, I don't know. We'll see. I'm frankly always wary of Cool Mini or Not these days. I know they want us to call him Simon, but I'm not going to. Um, it's cool mini or not. That's uh, they 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 don't get to they don't get, unless they change their name completely. At which point I will still call them cool mini or not. They don't get to live that one down. Um, but yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Rex is trying to push the door open. I can see his paws coming from underneath. Oh, he found a treat evidently, and then um, pushed it under the door, and now it's in here. So I guess I get to eat it. That sounds terrible. Those treats don't smell good. Um, new edition of Kill Team. I still haven't painted my starter for the current version. Well, that'll happen. Yeah, when you they decide to make it every three years, a new one, then that'll happen. Um, yeah, like they haven't announced anything yet. But again, like I said, if you can do math um, and have been paying attention, there will be a new one this season, this this summer. Probably just as well, there will also be. Now, I don't know whether they'll announce it at Adepticon or not. I could be, I would be astounded if they didn't announce Age of Sigmar 4 at Adepticon. It's just, they find, they kind of follow patterns. They announced 10th edition 40K at Adepticon. Um, I think that they're going to announce 4th edition Age of Sigmar at Adepticon. Now, whether they will announce <sighs> Kill Team at Adepticon or not, which would be third edition, I guess. I don't know. Uh, that's a good question. They may, they may not. They may not want to take too much away from Age of Sigmar. So maybe they'll announce um, Kill Team at Warhammer Fest or something like that, which comes in, I think, May, I think, if I remember correctly. I think it's May. So we will see. But I would be very surprised if there was not a new Kill Team this year, frankly. And I think that what's going to happen, well, I don't know what's going to happen. What I would like to see happen, I would like to hope that they learned from Warcry. And what I mean by that is when they went from first edition to second edition Warcry, they barely changed it. They did not go and rip off the Band-Aid and make all new rules and go, let's screw everything up again. Um, they made some tweaks. They added in reactions. They added some little things here and there. They made some tweaks. They obviously redid all the stats on all the stuff so that you have to buy a new compendium, which then they couldn't get the compendium shipped, so then they had to give it away for free as downloads, which they did not mean to do, I'm pretty sure. The fact that you could download the compendium for free, I don't think that that was planned. I think that they were trying to get them, you know, the, but they something happened, and I don't think they could get the book out for the compendium at the same time that they were launching Warcry 2, second edition, whatever you want to call it. So... Because of that, that's why we got that free. I do not believe that we would have gotten it free if they had had that book ready to ship. Um, but it's just the same issues they've been having for a while now. So, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll really see. 
Uh, what I would love to see, frankly, for myself, uh, with Kill Team is I'd love to, to have them take the army building rules or something like them from Warcry. Like in Warcry, for those of you that don't know, um, when you want to build an army, it's a thousand points. You need a leader, but otherwise a thousand points. And they don't tell you, oh, you can only take two of these or five of these or whatever. It is pretty much just like knock yourself out, go to town. You know what I mean? Um, and I would like to see something more like that. The the current army building army building uh, system for kill team is what's keeping me away from it because it's just like, oh, you get to take five of those guys. That's it. Like, well, can I customize more? Not really, no. And just, I'm not, I'm not interested. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm hoping they fix that. Maybe, I, I don't know. I'm not sure if I really particularly like the rules, the, the new rules of Kill Team either. So if they did make a bunch of changes and also make the army building better, that would be what I would, would maybe get me more interested in coming back. For, but for right now, no. Now, if they don't change much of anything, they just decide to go through and change a bunch of the way that the army stuff happens. Like, even if they just change the army building system so that it is better, I'd be like, okay, I'll give it a try again. But if they just decide we're going to change stuff so you have to buy another book, but we're not going to change stuff much, then that will also keep me away. Um, but I would really like to see them do something that's a little bit more... Um, gives you some more agency when building your your forces. I really would like to see that. Now you may say, but Uncle Adam, what about combat patrol? Combat patrol doesn't give you an agency when you build your forces for the most part. And that's true, but that's also a beginner game to get you into 40k. It is dipping your toe into 40k. I don't think Kill Team is designed to do that anymore because it's it, that's what they originally kind of did it for in 2018. They were like, oh, this will get you into 40k. And then they were like, oh, maybe not. Actually, it's kind of its own standalone thing. And that's why they made combat patrol. So I, I get that, but we will see. Um, let's see here. Finally getting my first army painted. Seems like the more I paint, the more stuff I find to go back and touch up. How do I get out of this loop and actually get something finished? Um, getting a little light again. Oop, there we go. Um, uh, honestly, part of it is just letting it be a little bit. As you paint an army, especially if it's early on in your kind of hobby career, uh, you will get better as you paint the army. The, the, the third squad that you paint will be better than the first squad you paint, and the fifth squad that you paint will be better than the third and the first. It's just the way it works. Um, so you kind of have to, like, that's kind of a thing. You know what I mean? You have to... Uh, uh... Rex, stop it. He's driving me nuts. Um so yeah it's just uh, i mean you know one thing you could do is after you get your entire army painted you could go back and fix things um sometimes fixing things isn't that hard sometimes it's just painting over a little bit to tighten things up a little bit to kind of edge highlight to do little things like that um it kind of depends so you know and some people will be like well i'm gonna go back and strip the first three squads i did uh, that that puts you into a spot where it's just taking you more time to get things done but it, it depends it's up to it's up to you as a as a a hobbyist as a painter as a player what you're happy with if like the first couple of squads are real bad yeah you know, either try to touch them up or strip them and start over on those so that they match up the 18th squad that you did you know for this army or whatever um yeah I'm supposed to get an early spring so hopefully it'll be warm enough for spray spray cans again soon yeah i've got some terrain i gotta get done and so yeah spray cans would be great Thanks for the primer help. I'm also doing 3D printed a gauge or garage model kit, and I thought a spray would be easier. Rattle can country sounds like a new shirt idea. Hmm, yeah, I can see that. Good morning from Maryland. Working on a definitely not Imperial Guard for Grimdar Future. Nice. Oh, yeah, Steinal Res. I always forget about Steinal Res. I had a bottle of black Steinal Res. I just tried their primer again recently, and uh, half of it worked, and then it got all weird and clumpy on me, and so I stopped using it. I don't know. I've never had great luck with it. I don't know why. Usually, I usually use Australian export. I've never heard of that. I had a stretch of uh, 50 degree days recently and prepared ahead of time to bust out some priming. Nice. I find the 2X to be a little hydrophobic. Paint doesn't want to go on super well. Yeah, I think that can be a problem too. It, like it can be a little thick and sometimes a little too glossy almost or something, you know? Turn up your mic gain just a touch. You're a tad soft. 
well, I'm peeking. I don't know. I'm, when I'm talking, I'm hitting the yellow in the beacon mic thing, or the sorry, the um, thing there, and I can't turn up in. Um, I can't turn up any higher in OBS. I'm all turned up there. Uh, I could go into the mic settings where I'm hitting. Yeah, I'm in the talk zone there. I think it should be fine. Maybe it's it could be on your end a little bit. I'm not saying it is, but that that is the case sometimes. Um, can you say your Twitch show times again? Thank you. Uh, six hours behind me. Oh yeah. Uh, normally when I'm streaming on Twitch, I'm streaming at um like so tomorrow Monday it'll be 7 p.m. Central time, uh, and uh, I do my Friday streams at 10 a.m. Central time. So yeah, I'm in the central time zone. So uh, if you are, if I'm six six hours behind, then you're probably in like GMT or England or whatever that, yeah. So um, the Monday night one doesn't usually work for the folks uh, living in the UK and Europe because it's usually one to two o'clock in the morning there, depending on where you are. Uh, so I see more folks from the UK and Europe, generally in maybe like, uh, like the, the, the Friday one, because then it's like afternoon, you know what I mean? So um hello from rainy bavaria painting star Wars ships. absolutely happy sunday joined to a resonant um and suit, uh, felt better there you go last week was not good well i'm sorry to hear that painting the walking dead miniatures while listening it's interesting that that's coming back out again you know what i mean like i feel like they lost the the license for a while and now they've gotten it back or something like that but it's interesting for sure um won't use anything but Krylon Camo. Krylon Camo is real nice, but it's also hard to find. I wish it weren't, but it is. Uh, Rome, New York. How you doing? Sunny Hampshire, UK. Fairly new to 40K, but tempted to buy the Astra Militarum Combat Patrol. Love the channel. I appreciate that. Thank you. I like the Astra Militarum uh, Combat Patrol. I was answering comments this morning because I woke up real early because Rex, you know, woke up real early. And um, a friend of mine who commented on my video... Uh, um, Miranda from uh, Wargamer Girl, her channel, um, she was saying that she was hoping that they come out with a new Astra Militarum Combat Patrol because uh, I assume, I, I inferred from her comment that she doesn't like the current one. I kind of like the current one. I mean, first of all, it was fun to paint. Um, I enjoyed that. But, and I'm admittedly not a particularly good player, so maybe I don't know strategy and it's actually, actually a, a trash list. I mean, I haven't won with it, but I've only played with it a couple of times and I have a tendency not to win anyway, so it doesn't really surprise anyone that I'm not winning with it. That all being said, I don't know, I like that Sentinel does some work, you know, like when you get a vehicle in your, um, in your combat patrol, uh, a lot of armies don't exactly know what to do with it. Last time I played with Sam, he was running his Tyranids and I was running my guard. And basically his, I think that's called Psychophage. It's sort of the big monstery kind of looking guy. Um, we just refer to him as Truckosaurus for reasons. Um, but anyway, Truckosaurus and my Sentinel just got into a slap fight and that they were just tied up for like a good portion of the game. Now, if I was a better player, I would have figured out some sort of weird stratagem or whatever to get it so I could back up and shoot or something like that or whatever. But um uh, I don't know, it's survived till the end. So right there, I'm like, I, that's better than most of the things that I use in that game when I'm playing. So I don't know. I like the uh, Astro Militarum Combat Patrol. Fun to paint too, for specific reasons. But uh, And good sculpts. Everything's new or pretty new. Yeah, I think everything's new. Yeah, because everybody's skinny. Everybody's not like those big, huge, beefy, like uh, Cadian guys. Like even the guys in the um, field ordnance bases or whatever. That one's called basically the, the howitzer and the other one. Like those are both, yeah. There's a howitzer and like a rocket pod. And those are also got the same new models uh, standing around the edges and stuff like that. So Junction City, Kansas. How you doing? Um, oh, everything moved. Um... Let's see here. Auto battler. That's, yep, those are the words that you're looking for. Yep, that's the words I'm looking for. Just need to go to Waka Waka, Wisconsin. See, that would be fun. I There should be a, yeah, there should be a Waka Waka, Wisconsin. That'd be fun. Okay, here we go. Um, using the right primer is a must and used semi-gloss. Not thinking about it. Spent two days scrubbing it off when I realized nothing would stick to it. Yeah, gloss primer is, well, that's not primer <laughs> in my opinion, I don't think. I don't think there's such a thing as gloss primer. Like gloss varnish, yeah, but not gloss primer. 
Any suggestions for the best place to get orc bits to uh, help orc up models? Um, honestly, Cromlech. And again, the hashtag not sponsored, but Cromlech makes a lot. Cromlech starts with a K. It's like K-R-O-M-L-E-C-H. I don't think there's a K on the end. Hang on. No, there's an H on the end. Um, but yeah, no, definitely. They're, uh, I would say that they're probably, because they make tons and tons of like orc-related bits. Um, back in the day in Kill Team 2018, I was going to build an orc list, and I started working on it, and uh, my normal just regular orc boys were all going to have fezes because Cromlech makes heads of orc heads basically with fezes, and I was like, sweet. And then they changed the game before I got to that point, and then that list wouldn't work anymore, and so... Anyway, um, how how you do? Uh, doing okay, Robin. Good morning from Berlin, Germany. After my first night with Space Station Zero, my head is over and over filled with campaign and crew ideas. I love it so much. Thank you, thank you to you two snarling badgers. I appreciate that. I do. Uh, I think Vince probably appreciates it too. It was, I mean, it's a great game. Um, we really do enjoy it. Uh, the artwork in it is spectacular. Um, you know. You love all your games, hopefully. That's the that's the idea. But I think that that one, so far of the ones we've made, that one may resonate the best with folks, you know? Like, everybody's got their thing. Like, there are people out there who are like, oh, Majestic 13, like, I love UFOs. I love, like, X-Files, XCOM, like, all that kind of stuff. This is right up my alley. I'm really digging it. I've already got great alien monsters I can use or I've got them in mind or whatever, that kind of stuff. So there's people out there who are, like, in our Discord for, the, for Snarling Badger Studios, um, which you can find if you go to snarlingbadger.com up in the top header bar thing, there's a discord logo there. So you can join the discord there. Um, but there's people in all the different game sections who are, you know, like for rain and hell space station zero, um, for majestic 13 and now for tanks for the apocalypse or well snarl really. Um, but you know, we've got uh, a hobby and a rules section. So the rules section is very frequently for like people asking questions and saying, hey, you know, like, how does this work or blah, blah, blah. But then the rules sections are always like, hey, this is like, you know, or the, sorry, the hobby section is always like, this is the new tank I'm working on. This is the new, you know, cabal I'm working on, like whatever. Um, so that's kind of fun. But uh, yeah, people are passionate about the different games and that's really cool. But I would say the one that probably people are, the most amount of people that are passionate about is probably, uh, Space Station Zero. So, um, and I'm really hoping that the next one is also something that people are going to dig too. I, I really do. Uh, checking in from Amman. How you do? Still working on the 40 some minis for Dead by Lead. Nice. Uh, Puerto, Via Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. The only reason I know how to say that is because of, I think, because of Love Boat, because it launched out of Port Puerto Vallarta, or maybe it would land there. I don't know. I just remember from the show back in the eighties, love boat, the Puerto Vallarta was always, and I think I'm saying it right, but I might not be, they might've been saying it wrong in the show. I don't know. Uh, Nottingham, England. How you doing? Perth, Australia, uh, recently tornadoed central coast of coast, of, co the central coast of Flo of California. Look, tornadoed central coast of California. I don't know why that's a tongue twister, but boy, oh boy. Uh, I hope everyone's safe. You know what I mean? Uh, unseasonably mild Ottawa. Yeah, it's been unseasonably mild here too. Like a couple days ago, it was 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm like, it's early February in Wisconsin. That's not supposed to happen. We're not, that's, uh. <sighs> Hearing the city name sparked the earworm here too. Nice. Rhode Island, how goes it today? Not too bad. All the French towns too. Gotcha. My hometown in Ohio is uh, Wapakoneta. Wap Wapakoneta? See, once you know it, you know it, but, you know, it takes some time. You got to spell it out or sound it out. We have some challenging place names in Scotland, too, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Want to make any guesses about uh, Milnavy, uh, Strathaven, and Ochermuchie? There you go. I got those all first try, right? To be fair, there's a lot of um, times when a lot of those, a lot of those uh, words are... Um, a lot of the letters are silent letters, especially like, you know, like you see Worcestershire and it's actually Worcester or something like that. You know, there's a lot of that going on in the UK from what I've seen. What is your opinion of on hobby perfection? It's not possible. Uh, example being all minis and pieces need to be painted for aesthetic and immersion reasons. I think that there's nothing wrong with like saying, look, I don't want to play this army until it's painted. 
or I've seen people, and I'm kind of like this too, it's just not as much fun for me to play against someone who never paints their stuff, you know, I, that's, there's that. Um, perfection is not the same thing. Perfection is like each one of these pieces in my 2000 point army needs to be a golden demon winner, otherwise I'm not happy. Well, get used to not being happy, because that's, it's just not gonna, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I think that there are people out there who have these expectations for what has to happen in their games uh, as, as far as the, the paint jobs, and and then they're unhappy that they never get a, get to play with a painted army because it takes them 20 years to get a 2,000-point army done, and in 20 years, you're going to get seven new editions. So, I mean, how are you even going to keep up, really? So, um, you know, I, I totally understand, like, that doesn't, doesn't help. But the idea of, like, I don't want to play without having the stuff at least painted even if you paint it quick or speed paint it, I don't, I don't see that as being a problem personally, but again, that's me. Everybody's got, you know, some difference going on there. So happy time of day from a cold and cloudy Michigan. How you doing? Just finished up my Krond spine paint and putting together my cruel boys hoard. Nice. Germany painting a bunny with bright colors and a warm feeling to tackle the rainy weather here. Well, that's fun. I don't think I've ever painted a bunny. I don't think I have. Um, the worst was when I lived in Colorado. We had a uh, sagosh, sagawash, hmm. like that last part of that word, uh, gouache. It's a type of paint, I believe, or is that there's an O in that? Maybe there's an O in that. Now I come to think of it. Anyway, angrily crumples up Uncle Adam drama bingo card. Well, you know, <laughs> still got ninety four half painted Panzer Grenadiers for Flames of War. Been in a tub for over a year. I can't face finishing them at the moment. I understand that. So that's the thing. Why? I, that's why I, a big reason why I'm not into big army games is because I just don't want to paint 94 of anything. Like, especially if they all have to be the same. You know what I mean? Like, over time, sure. Last year, I'm sure I painted more than 94 models. Absolutely. Um, but I didn't paint 94 of the same model or almost the same model. You know what I mean? Oh, everyone's got to have the same color boots. Everyone's got to have the same hat. You know, that kind of jazz. I think in the uh, military, they don't call them hats. I think they call them helmets. But you, you get the point. Hey, you forgot your hat. You mean my helmet? Whatever. Um, you mean there's more to life than fighting about did the planet crack before the guard did online with strangers to take this stuff way too seriously? Wow, I'm way behind. Uh, but yes, <laughs> there is, as it turns out. Good afternoon from Petersburg, UK. Um, expecting a NIDS-flavored Kill Team 24 starter to follow the 40K narrative this edition, even if it'll be nearly over. I mean, I guess it's possible. Nids versus Nids versus orcs. That's what I want to see in the kill team. That'll never happen. They definitely have to have space marines in there or something like that. Um, cat battle. <laughs> Greetings from Tampa. How you doing? Blood for the cat gods. There you go. Uh, good morning from Hamilton, Ontario. It's been spring here for the last two weeks, but winter is coming back. Yeah, it's going to cool down a little bit here, but eh, not a lot. Which is fine, I suppose. I don't know. Morning from Madison. How you doing? Cambridge, UK. Uh, building a scratch terrain for Mordheim using the 1993 Red Terrain book from G-Dubs. I don't think I have the red one. I think I might have the blue one. I have one of the old How to Build Terrain books, and I can't remember if it's red or blue now off the top of my head. Kitty demands from another room, just let them in. You'll never win. I mean, well, until he gets the door open, I'm winning. Wisconsin has messed up name competition in Oklahoma. Well, sure. Lobero from the uh, UK is one to hear outsiders puzzle out. Yeah, I don't know if I got that right either. So watch. Huh. Um, fly off the handle because your opponent did not paint his army to be lore accurate. <laughs> See, that's, yeah. That's something that I'm not, like, super into. Uh, being Oh, it's got to be exactly lore accurate. Well, no, it doesn't. Uh... Deathwing Assault Box, cool. Glad you are able to get one. You're trying to focus on only a handful of games, now to just figure out how to figure out how to focus on only a handful of games. Hashtag struggle is real. You know, I mean, it's up to you, really, I suppose. Uh, like, I am, I like to play a bunch of different games, but I'm also not trying to get necessarily good at any of them. I'm not trying to become, like, a winner. Um, It's just not, I don't know. I, I'm, uh, I just had a t-shirt design that, says, that popped into my head that says winners or losers. And it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense, but it makes me laugh. Um, 
but yeah, no, I'm definitely a fan of uh, of of kind of hopping around from game to game a little bit. And also, I love the concept of being able to use models from this game and also in this game and potentially also in this game. So, um, but if you are a person who's like wanting to play competitively, it is probably a good idea to try to just hop onto one game and stick there. You know what I mean? It's probably not a bad idea to be like, look, I'm just playing Age of Sigmar because I want to go to tournaments and win or do well, at least, you know, that kind of stuff. But if you're just like, I want to have fun and paint up all kinds of weird crap that, you know, as it strikes my fancy, then probably playing a bunch of different small indie games is probably not a bad idea. Stormcast Eternals. I knew, I'm like, I recognize it, but I can't think of what it is. If, you just, if it would have just said Sigmarines, then I would have been like, you know, oh yeah. Given the past of waiting roughly a decade in between releases of Space Hulk, would you say we're about due for a new edition? I'd love to. I'd love to see a new edition. Uh, we'll see. Be cool, though. Um, let's see here. Working on Blood Bowl minis instead of watching Super Bowl. Gotcha. I think that makes sense. Really wish GW would take the Age of Sigmar rules and apply them to the old world. Love the aesthetic, but I'm not a rank and flank guy myself. Skirmish would have been even better. I think people would have... Not a lot of people. I think that there's a small group of people who would have thrown themselves into the river. I was going to say their models, but they probably already threw their models in the river. So now they would throw themselves in the river if they decided to bring back the old world and make it either round bases or skirmish. I think there's a certain number of people who would have just, there would have been gnashing of teeth, rending of garments. Um, yeah, it's it just, uh, it, I don't think it would have worked out. I got to be honest, I'm a little amazed they bothered to even try making it again. Uh, and I do say try because, you know, you couldn't really get a lot of it. If, if you, there was a lot of people out there who were like, boy, I sure do. Oh, I can't get it. Oh, it's already sold out. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, I'm not one of those people, thankfully. There's like a part of me that kind of wants some new skeletons. Well, not new. They're old, obviously. They're old enough to drink. Uh, but I kind of want some skeletons, some of the old skeletons for reasons just nostalgic ones i already have a bunch of them painted and, and i've been using them for years but i kind of would like to do some more but i yeah i don't know i had a conversation with vince actually and he was painting them up for a video or something i think at some point and he was like yeah these are these are <laughs> these are not great and i'm like yeah no that they, they were always weird giant heads giant hands um right now and then our cats will push kibble under the door while we're sleeping. Well, maybe they're trying to feed you so that you're, you know, they're like, hey, just in case you need a snack. That's nice of them. Rex is a menace and I'm here for it. He can be a bit of a menace. Cool or not wants you to pronounce it, come on, with an Arnie accent. Well, I assume anyway. I haven't asked. I don't think that's gonna, yeah, that's, sorry. I always thought it was, come on, like, come on. See, that's, it, no, it's, it's cool mini or not. Like, the, the company started... The website started, there used to be a website way back in the 90s called Hot or Not. Well, Hot or Not, not Hot or Not. That would be that would be the Wisconsin version. Um, but Hot or Not. And then you would put up a picture of allegedly yourself, I guess. And then people would vote on whether you were hot or not, I guess. And so then they just took that same exact idea and called it Cool Mini or not. And then you would vote on minis. Sam used to put stuff up on Cool Mini or not and was very cognizant of whether he got like a 9.3 or a 9.4 or a 9.5, that kind of stuff. Um, and it was the place you used to go to see that kind of stuff. And I don't even know if that's around anymore. I don't know if they still have that portion of it. But then it was like, hey... We have this website that everyone's coming to. We've got some advertising on there that doesn't make us a bunch of money. And it doesn't make us too much money. And then they started selling hobby supplies. And I don't remember if that was before or after the guy bought the, the website off of whoever started it. But that's their roots. That's where they started. It was a place you posted pictures of your miniatures so that people could vote on whether they were good or not. Um and then they turned it into like a hobby tools place and then they started selling stuff and then they started making their own games with um started with zombicide i think and then you know stuff like wrath of kings and all kinds of or not wrath of kings yeah wrath of kings um yes wrath of kings and then dark age and all kinds of jazz like that and now they just make kickstarter board games with way too many minis in them um as far as i can tell but they also make song of ice and fire uh, and now they're making a skirmish version of that. So we'll see how that goes. But I'm still going to call them Cool Mini or not, and they can 
they can die mad about it. Good morning from Austin, Texas. Currently painting Walking Dead miniatures. Nice. I tried the cat treats once. I do not recommend. No, I wouldn't want to do that. Pre-ordered this Quar's War last night from Morgan's Atlantic. Can't wait for these new hard plastic Quar minis. I, in theory, am also getting that box. I reached out to them because I've been interested in... So this company called Zombie Smith Miniatures has been making this game for years and years and years called This Quar's War. And what a Quar is, they're these little... They kind of look like bipedal anteater people. So they are just these like weird little aliens and it's a world where that they're the, the dominant species or whatever. And they're just, you know, they got like kind of fat little tummies and they got, um, you know, arms and legs and they walk around on their, their legs. Uh, and, but then they have these kind of long sort of anteater kind of noses and such. Um, and the game is a very, it's got a very kind of World War I vibe to it, always has. And it used to be a 15 millimeter game, which I was like, I like the artwork. It's really cool. But again, like I mentioned earlier, I'm not super into 15 millimeter. Then they make it into 28 millimeter and I bought some, but it was all metal. And the worst part was you had to glue the, the heads onto the bodies. And so you had this tiny little head kind of that had to get glued into like a neck area sort of. And it was, you know, I was trying to pin them and it was just a nightmare. And so they were great models, just like that wasn't the way. I think that the head should have been at, you know, part of the body. And then maybe you glue the arms on. But honestly, you know, metal models are still real hard. Uh, they're still real difficult. So um, nonetheless, uh, long story short is then um, War Games Atlantic has now started working with them and is making hard plastic quar. Uh, and the box is like, yeah, like is going to be shipping end of this month. And so I reached out to my my contact at uh, uh, War Games Atlantic and I'm like, look, if you guys, because he's offering to send me stuff frequently and I've bought tons of stuff from them in the past, you know, and he's always like, you know, just let me know. I'll send it to you. I'm like, nah, it's fine. Um, but I was like, look, if you want to send me some of this, that quar box, I would, I would love to get it, my hands on it because I've been really looking for plastic quar for a long time. Um, but it comes with enough forces for like, it's like a two player kind of starter thing and everything. It's got the rules and all that jazz. And I just really, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So that should be something you'll see some stuff here about on the channel at some point. Pushed a treat under the door. He didn't open it. Try another treat. Well, I mean, you know, maybe he's trying to pay me to get in. I guess that's a possibility. I don't know where he got a treat from. Anyway, uh, good morning from the woods of North, uh, of, Woods of NYC. There's woods in New York City? I had no idea. I mean, I suppose there's the um, uh, the Central Park. I don't know. Hoping the next kill team takes a cue from Warcry and returns to open list building. That's what I said. I mean, I probably said it after you posted this, and then I just, now I'm just now seeing it. Because, again, like I said, I'm way behind. But still, I agree. No Warhammer Fest this year. No kidding. Weird. Uncle Adam, why are you leery of, of uh, Kulmini or not? Um, I just... They got. I really liked Wrath of Kings. I thought Wrath of Kings was a really cool system. I liked the models and all that kind of stuff. And they're like, ah, oh, cool. And they just shut it down. Um, and then I kind of started to get into uh, Dark Age. And I think you can still buy Dark Age stuff, but I could be wrong on that. And also, I got into Dark Age because I thought the models were awesome. And it turned out the rules were bad. I just did not like the rules. They were like just so much of the stuff like didn't make sense. And I was being taught the game. Uh, by a local guy who was like the world champion like was it like won the work the, the tournament at gen con so was very good at the game knowledgeable knew it and we were playing uh this is years ago and he was like and i would be like seriously that's how that rule works he's like uh-huh and i'm like that doesn't make any sense he's like no it never has <laughs> i'm like so just yeah that for me rules matter so uh, there's other people out there who don't care about the rules, which is fine. That's they, they care about the lore, they care about the models, they care about whatever. But for me, like if a rule doesn't make sense to me, and I'm like, why does it do that? Then it's it sometimes can be real weird and and difficult. So, um, the Pachow beanie is sold out. I wonder if they're out of that. I'll have to check on it. I'm moving to a new. Um, eventually very well hopefully hopefully soon but you know we'll see uh i'm moving to a new um merch company and because the merch company i've been using for a while is getting dumber at least they stopped backing nfts so much but still they're just yeah they're not great so i apologize about that but that stuff will be coming uh 
Uh, I really hope for the Warcry approach to kill team is done since some tweaks to current rules, line of sight especially. Sure, I've been hearing a lot about how line of sight and kill team is just jank. Um, I've had the chance to paint my kill team stuff from first edition, both the second starter and rogue trader. See, well, I mean, you know, I really hate the idea of a new edition of kill team coming up. Uh, that is sad, but I'm, I'm like I said, I'm 99% sure it's happening. There's potential to milk the stuff with new seasons with spiced up rules. Why would they do kill team third edition? Uh, because capitalism, because line goes up. That's, that's like, it's, there's a, there's a possibility they won't with kill team because really in the grand scheme of things, there hasn't been a new edition of, for example, Necromunda since they launched it in 2017. Necromunda, the new edition of, of Necromunda, as opposed to the version that came out in 1995, the new revamp came out in 2017. And there has not been technically a new edition, but there has. They just haven't been like, okay, this is the new, like they've come out with new starter boxes and the rules have changed here and there and been tweaked a little bit, but it's not been as decisive of a, this is last edition, this is the edition now, this is the edition before, that kind of stuff. So Necromunda is one of those games that they sort of like leak out new stuff and it's done differently. And I don't know why, but they do. Um, Blood Bowl is kind of like that, but Blood Bowl also does have seasons too, but they don't change the rules much. The rules haven't changed a ton in Blood Bowl since the beginning. So there's that as well. But obviously 40K is every three years. Uh, Age of Sigmar is every three years. As we've seen at this point in the past, Kill Team and Warcry have been every three years. People said I was nuts when I'm like, there's a new edition of Warcry coming out. And they're like, no, there's not. I'm like, it's three years old. And they're like, nah, but they, they did. Now, it was not, again, a huge change. They didn't really change things a ton, but they did change stuff enough that you had to buy new books. And that's what I could very easily foresee them doing here with Kill Team this, this summer. So, um, let's see here. Northern Virginia, how you doing? Speaking of cool mini or not, the slog continues still working on Marvel Zombies Zombicide minis today and from a mild Columbus, Ohio. I, that's a lot of minis. Yeah, exactly. Knowing you're not huge on Marvel Crisis Protocol, will you be trying Mojo Ball? I haven't even heard of Mojo Ball. What the heck is Mojo Ball? Assuming it's going to be Blood Bowl-esque MCP. Oh, I have never even heard about it. But you don't need anything other than your characters' cards and models, no tactic cards. Hmm. I've not even heard of Mo Mojo Ball. I miss old Kill Team. It was so much better. I liked it better, too. I really did. And a lot of people who play the new version are like, no, the old version was dumb. And I'm like, well, you know, let's agree to disagree. Um, list building and cover rules need fixing. I, this is what I hear a lot of, yes. I know you're not a 15 millimeter fan, but I'm excited for Battlefront's Clash of Steel that is coming out in a couple of months. Alternate history, World War II that includes tanks not produced before the world ended. Oh, or war ended, not the world. <laughs> well, uh, painting a Blackstone Fortress minis to use in Space Station Zero. Nice. Yeah, I can see that. That'd be very cool. I feel a kill team not being an intro game anymore is a problem, not a bonus. I think that... I don't think that, well, I don't think that, that Kill Team was ever an intro game to 40K. You know what I mean? Is it an intro game into Wargaming? Sort of, to some degree. But I don't think it's an intro game to Kill Team, or sorry, to 40K. Even the original 2018 version wasn't. There was a lot of things that were the same. There was a lot of like, oh, strength and toughness and that, that, that. You just, and a lot of things, especially if you'd played 40K, picking up uh, Kill Team was super quick. But that was not the point. The idea was in generally to get new people playing skirmish games because skirmish games are easier to convince people to play. And then you do that and it's great. And then eventually you're like, well, you've got this one or two boxes of like models that you did for this. You might as well build a whole 2000 point army. It, people don't actually make that leap as much, I think, as they thought they were going to. So that's when they were like, OK, let's completely change the way the kill team is because it seems to be it's kind of its own thing and we'll do that. And then let's make a game that is a true intro to 40K, which is Combat Patrol. And it's a true intro to 40K because you're playing 40K. You use the 40K core rules. The stats for the models are a little different than the normal 40K versions of those same models, but everything else is basically the same. Um, now, that also the very interesting thing, and this is the thing that I've been suggesting, and I'm hoping they're going to do it, 
But those Vanguard boxes that they've been selling for Age of Sigmar, I would like to see those basically be combat patrol for Age of Sigmar. I like I think it'd be great if you could buy one of those boxes and it would have like downloadable free stats and then you know blah 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 and you get into fourth edition uh, Age of Sigmar via Vanguard. Um, but we'll see. I don't know. It it kind of seems like that's what they're trying to do there, but we won't know until they announce that stuff coming up in, uh, like I said, probably March, probably late March uh, at Adepticon. Let's see here. Motivation has been killer for me. Thus, three years on, I have primed kill teams. Gotcha. Blackstone and Space Station Zero sounds perfect. Yep. I don't mind Kill Team's list building, but I'd like it to be a little bit less crunchy and competitive focused. Kill Team is surprisingly, the new edition of Kill Team is surprisingly competitive focused. I saw a pretty big tournament run by a group called Squad Games. I think it was Squad Games. Their logo looked like Squid Games, but they called themselves Squad Games. I don't know what that's about, but nonetheless, they were running like a pretty big tournament, live streaming the whole deal at LVO. Uh, and so, yeah, no, you're right. I think that definitely Kill Team is very competitive based. But to be frank, I think that almost everything that GW is doing these days, other than, say, uh, you know, stuff that's really super crazy dense like... Um, Necromunda, probably, but all the rest of that stuff is definitely got a real competitive edge to it. And I think that that's just leadership has just decided that that should be more of a focus, which I think is, I don't agree with it, but you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not their, uh, I'm not their boss. I'm not their dad. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's a good question. Um, Streamlining and slightly simplifying some of the rules would be appreciated by me. I think that that would be also a good idea, too. I, I don't disagree. But to be perfectly frank, if you want that, just pick up Grimdark Future Firefight because that ticks all those boxes and you can use whatever models you want. Price of perfection is prohibitive. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Still on a piece of paper uh, over there. I mean, you can't see it from here because it's in the basement and out the window. Well, out the window and then down in the basement. But yeah, that piece of paper from that video is still hanging above my airbrush room. Kill Team Compendium Army Building is boring, and it was a bad choice to start the game with the bespoke teams building different but still not based on points. Yeah, I, I just don't like it either. Uh, Non-Compendium has so much more options. Depends on the team still. Sure. Are you looking toward... You're looking forward to the Not Chaos Guard from War Games Atlantic? Yes. I think I ordered... Oh, the, the Damned? Yeah, I ordered those guys just recently. They were... Game found, not Kickstarter, right? It was Game found. So they had like a, it's not a pre order, a post, I forget what they call it when you're like, oh, I didn't make the Kickstarter, but you can still get in. Um, pledge manager, I don't know, something like that. I just actually did put a bunch of money down to get a three or four boxes or something like that. It was like, there's like the male one, the female one, there's like goat people one, and then you can also just order individual sprues, and I ordered a bunch of individual sprues as well. I think it was like three, yeah, I think it was three boxes and a bunch of sprues, and so you just go through and go, I want this box, this box, this box, and then this, and then there's just a bunch of different sprues and all that kind of stuff. I don't know when that stuff's going to actually show up, but it will eventually show up, so. Eventually, I'm going to have to, well, Vince and I are going to have to make a game that is just about warring factions of like chaos troopers or something like that because i have i have a lot of different chaos trooper type models as it turns out and i have even more that are like stls that i haven't you know had printed yet uh good morning from jonesboro how you doing new painters are not wrong to follow gw's battle ready for their first army yeah, no, I, I think that I think it's a good idea to definitely do that. I think it's definitely a good idea to not try. OK, first of all, when you when you're just getting into painting, you should never try to be like, oh, I'm going to try to paint like the like the, you know, golden demon people, the heavy metal people, like anything like that. The trick is, is to start out, paint something. You know, you've followed a bunch of probably tutorials and things like that off of YouTube. You've learned a bunch of stuff that way. Now you sit down and actually try to apply that. 
And in my mind, you do it to inexpensive models you don't care a bunch about. And then you just try to get better. So you're always comparing yourself to your last models. Is the, is, are these weird skeletons that I got from WizKids uh, and the local game store, are they better than the last group of weird, you know, kobolds that are from the same company in the same store? Did, did I do a better job? You know, that kind of stuff. You're just constantly trying to get better. And if you're then going to, like, I would tell people time and time again, if you want to get into 40K, don't start painting 40K. Paint something else. 40K stuff is expensive. You don't want to buy, like, a $60 box of, like, 10 Primaris dudes as your first ever models because you're going to end up having to strip them. You know what I mean? Um, so, uh, yeah, start painting something else just to get the hang of using the brush and the water and the palette and all that stuff and then go, okay, cool, now I'll start doing this. But don't... Don't also be like, I have to paint 500 models before I can start painting my 40K stuff, because that's also putting you behind the eight ball in that situation as well. So um, let's see here. What color do you use for the white or gray or off-white when you Zenithal with an airbrush? Feels like mine is close now. Hopefully the basement is done this week, coming week and the rest will follow. Nice. When I want to make something look kind of white, I will use a light gray. Uh, well, so... I have a gray primer. That's another thing too. I want someone to make a light gray primer like air for airbrush. You know what I mean? I want a light gray airbrush primer. I have like a mid gray airbrush primer and I don't remember who makes it. Anyway, so what I will do in that situation is I'll start by priming because I just did this recently with my uh, second force of steel rift uh, max. My first force is all orange, bright orange. These guys are going to be like white and blue. So I started off by priming them this kind of mid gray. And then I did a zenithal with a real light gray, like a pretty heavy zenithal. And then I did a highlight with basically white. Getting like a, uh, like a, the sun's coming out as it turns out. And you can see it, it's right there. Um, can I just do a thing like, Anyway, um, so uh, yeah, that's 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 generally what I will do. But I could save a step there if I just had a, like a light gray primer. So there's that. We're gonna see a Tau kill team, Uncle. I mean, maybe, maybe at some point. Does anyone even play normal Space Marines anymore, or is the flavor strictly Primaris now? Uh, I prefer Primaris, mainly because I just think they're more fun to paint. Um, but I don't know about other people. Yeah. Biggest thing I've learned about painting is complete, not perfect. Also true, yeah, for sure. I have some normal space marines in Stargrave. That'd be a good place. Like I've used like old TAC marines, you know, and then just given them different heads. Like I somewhere I have a couple of TAC marines walking around here. Well, they're not walking because they're, you know, pieces of plastic and they're not actually alive, no matter what people tell me. Um, but I do have some TAC marines sitting around here somewhere uh, with like alien gray heads that I got from either Anvil Industry or maybe Cromlech or some company. So it looks like a big beefy, you know, tack marine, but then instead of having like no helmet on for dumb reasons and then just having a big beefy, you know, space marine head, it's got like a little skinny like alien gray head and uh, it makes me happy. Um, new kill team is okay, too tied to competitive play. Yeah, it seems to be the case. It's lame how compendium gets so little love, and the first kill team had better list building, in my opinion. Also, beta decima is kind of lame. I don't know what beta decima is, but the rest of that, I agree. Um, it seems like they did the compendium just so that they could launch. It really feels to me like they did the compendium so that they could launch. Oh, geez. There we go. Um, because they were like, we're going to release all these other bespoke lists later, you know, in box sets, in White Dwarf, in blah, blah, blah. But we got to launch with something. So let's make this real trash and put it in this book. And then people can use that. Because it, it's just like literally the lists are all the most boring things in the world. You know, I've told the story many times about how I really enjoyed my Necron kill team from, um, you know, kill, from Kill Team 2018. And then when 2021 came along, it was completely illegal because you couldn't have four different types of models in your group. You could have two max, and it was really bad. So, yeah. Man, man took out the license back on Walking Dead. But, yeah, I assume it had something to do with that. The company with the license for The Walking Dead didn't want to keep going. They just gave up? That's weird. 
Uh, when airbrushing, do you need to use a true primer or will any matte paint do? I usually a rattle can guy, but wanted to get an airbrushing since I'm also a Wisco kid and need an alternative. Makes sense. Um, I generally do focus on primers, like airbrush primers. They they have something something extra in them that's most supposed to make them stick to the paint better, from what I understand. To the sorry, to the plastic better or the model better. Um, and they also, if you just use a normal paint, sometimes and it depends on the paint. But if you just use a normal paint as like directly over the plastic, it seems like. Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, it seems like if you just put normal paint over the plastic in a lot of situations, it is then it gives you a surface that is sometimes difficult to then actually get more paint over. I don't know why that is, but it does seem to be that way. Um, so yeah, the primers are generally a good idea for your airbrush, but it's not like. They usually come in bigger bottles, so you can like you know get a decent sized bottle of airbrush primer and then use it a lot. Like I have a tendency in most situations to use black as my initial primer, and then I will then go over it with colors on my airbrush. So like let's say I'm painting I don't know a space marine or something else that's very mono color. Like it's maybe a cool wizard with a robe, and the majority of his robe is the majority of the model, and the robe is going to be blue. Let's say so I'm going to prime in black, and then I'm going to take. Uh, a darker blue and do like a zenithal and then do a lighter blue and do another zenithal, um, you know, just on the extreme highlight places and then go from there. And it works out pretty well. Um, let's see here. Um, Wow, I'm way behind. <laughs> wow. Um, when you say Cromwack, I suddenly smell movie popcorn. Not sure why. That's I don't know what that means. There we go. Okay, I see these. Um, Manta kept pushing for it, as did the players, and they finally came to an agreement about to reboot it. Well, that's cool. I'm painting second edition starter orcs when I started in the 90s. No one told me to rattle can outside. Oh, yeah. No, rattle can outside is a really good idea. But rattle, setting, rattle canning inside the house is not a good idea. Um, I love the current Astro Militarum Combat Patrol box. The models are gorgeous. Yeah. No, I, that's the thing. I really like the new sculpts. I know there's a lot of people out there that are like, well, they're not so big and chunky and thick like the old ones. I'm like, well, yeah, that's the benefit. That's that's a good thing. Because, yeah, I don't like the, the old ones where their wrists were as big as their thighs, you know, and they had those big giant, like, you know, heads. I'm like, I think you've been taking too many roids there, my friend. Uh, so yeah, I, I really like the new ones. I think that they're much, they're much better sculpts. I think I play normal space Marines and I think they're cool. What? Well, that's good. According to rumors, every codex will come out with a new CP box. This edition, uh, that would not surprise me in any way, shape or form. I would assume that everyone, that every one of the the new because they'll have new models and if they've just thought ahead even a little bit it would be not that hard to put them into a box so they, they did it with uh adeptus mechanicus already you know what i mean and i'm just assuming that everyone after that so i'm assuming that what dark angels probably next will have a new um um uh combat patrol box to be fair i really like the old combat patrol box because it's only 10 models and one of them is a uh redemptor dreadnought which those are a lot of fun to paint um but that being said, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. It'll be real interesting to see what they're going to do with that. And um, I'm also wondering, so like if you also look at the pattern here, right? So they came out with the Space Marine Combat Patrol, the unattached Combat Patrol, as I've been calling it, uh, in that it does not have a Combat Patrol box. It's the stuff you either need to have Shadow Spear, right? Or... There was a Vanguard box. Just all different kinds of things. And I talked about it in the video on Friday. So you need one of those things so you can get those models. Great. Um, but there there was a new Combat Patrol. Sorry. There was a new Codex that's already come out for the Space Marines, right? So now, but just putting out Space Marines, I'm like, well, of course they put out Space Marines. Space Marines are their favorites. That's what they put out. It's the poster boys or whatever of the, or the army. It's great. Or of the game. But then in February's upcoming um, 
white dwarf they're putting in uh, a new attack unattached uh combat patrol for tyranids now what's interesting to me is that tyranids also have a codex right so i'm wondering if they're going to put these unattached ones in following along with the codices as well right so there was the Space Marine one, and then in February, which I was also very surprised that they're putting a combat patrol in two months in a row. I kind of thought they were going to space it out more, but we'll see where that goes. Um, let's say that they just continue doing it. They're just like, look, we're going to put a new combat patrol into White Dwarf. Like, they're going to do it all year long, maybe. I don't know. Well, let's, 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 maybe that's a 2024 thing. Who knows? If that's the case, then, then, then March's combat patrol would probably be Adeptus Mechanicus. Uh, an unattached Adeptus Mechanicus combat patrol. I could see something like that. So if they follow along in that format, it'll be interesting. Now, what will be interesting too is if they decide to leapfrog ahead. If they're just like, cool, we're putting on a Chaos one and there's not a new Chaos Codex out yet or whatever, but it'll be very interesting to see how they're going to handle that. <clears throat> Let's see here. Uh, new Adeptus Mechanicus combat patrol needs a tank. Or is it Adept no, Adeptus Militarum. See, that's the problem with making it AM and AM, right? Right? Because I think Mechanicus, but you're thinking Metal. I, I, I just don't know if a tank makes sense. Like a Chimera doesn't make sense. Hellhound maybe. Maybe a Hellhound they could put in those boxes, but I don't know. That's a good question. I feel like a Lehman Rust is too much. Also, they have to consider cost, too. Like, they don't want to put in, like, a, an expensive... Like, they're not putting a Rogal Dorn in there. Also, Rogal Dorn is, like, a pretty expensive tank points-wise, too. So, yeah, it seems unlikely. What I'm going to be very interested in seeing is how they balance these things a little better. Because right now, the, the initial combat patrols were all balanced... Well, they weren't, kind of. They were They were balanced in rules. They were like, you know, the boxes were all quite different from each other. And so a lot of people early on were like, well, Combat Patrol is not going to be like this because there's no way that an Adeptus... Me or the, the Imperial Guard box... <laughs> there's no way the Imperial Guard box could be equal to the uh, Custodes box, which is true, which is why they gave the Imperial Guard some very, very simple secondary objectives, like really easy something to, so you can get more points, hopefully. Uh, and also they made it so that the Custodes, you can't run the entire box, which gives you choice because you can either run it this way or that way, which is fine, but you also can't run it all together, right? Same with the Grey Knights. So that's just a side, a side effect of them coming up with this idea for combat patrol when combat patrol boxes were already out there in the wild and they looked at a bunch of them and were like oh crap that's not gonna work well we can try to we can try to make it work now maybe it'll be better if they do this again with the vanguard boxes for um age of sigmar that'd be great wouldn't it so um yeah but i also would hope that these new lists that they come out with and the new boxes they come out with would be better balanced Balance is a fleeting thing, and it's hard to say, and everybody's got their different opinions about it, but eh, it'd be interesting to see. It would be definitely interesting to see. Um, does anyone use the Pro Acryl basing textures? How do they stack up against Vallejo or AK? Oh, yeah, no, that's the Pro Acryl basing textures, that's pretty much all I use. I use the fine on models, and I use the coarse on terrain. And um, Oh, I also use the ultra fine too, which they call snow, but I put it on before I put on... Uh, primer so I don't care that it's white it could be whatever color they wanted but they use it as snow like I use basing textures never as the last step always as the before priming step because I'm going to paint over it anyway you know what I mean like that's the idea that I, but that people are different but um yeah those are all great I like them better and I don't uh if I ever used I've never used the AK stuff I'm trying to think about Vallejo. I don't. I think years ago I used Vallejo, but mainly it's been uh, Pro Acryl for the basing texture stuff right now. Um, I have a Vallejo gloss black primer. The only model I ever used it on was destined to be liquid chromed. After that, I don't know. Yeah, gloss black primer seems weird. That does. I, I wouldn't. I yeah. First time I heard that was on a Model Train podcast a couple of years ago. Now it's everywhere. Oh, hashtag not sponsored. Yeah. Well, I believe in being transparent. 
So, you know. Greetings from Berlin, Germany. Question regarding storage of miniatures. I recently got three display cabinets for my Battletech stuff, but I will run out of space soon. How do I hand, how do you handle a large collection? I keep most of my stuff in boxes. I keep most of my stuff in like, I get these um, cardboard, they're like a cardboard banker's box. You know what I'm talking about when I say a banker's box? It's like a flat packed cardboard box. You want to fold it and that people, I don't know, they're called banker's boxes for some reason, at least around here, um, which is for paperwork and jazz like that. But, um, uh, Battle Foam. Battle Foam is the company. They make those um, designed to fit their large trays. So it says Battle Foam on the side. And it's like a banker box. And it's all folded, but it's designed to fit their large trays. And so then I just keep models that I don't use too frequently or whatever generally in those. I do have a display case. It is not built. It's um, one of those Deltoff or whatever display cases from... Um, ikea and it's still in the box it has been for years and one of these days i'll build it and put stuff in there but it is not this day so um yeah when i do get the delt off then i've been seeing online like clear acrylic shelves for it because like you only have like i don't know four or five shelves inside there and so if you're putting a bunch of guys who are this tall in there uh, or maybe even some tanks or some bigger creatures, there's still a lot of empty space. So there's a, companies and stuff you can see some sometimes on Amazon, sometimes even on Etsy, people who are like making like acrylic risers basically to put inside of those things so you can stack stuff a little bit higher and everything like that and whatever. But I, it is not something that I've done uh, myself much. So long since I've caught a Sunday program live. Going to sip my coffee, work on my blue meanie Harlequins, and enjoy. Well, it's good to hear, Russell. Past several Kill Team releases have been uncreative. They've been updated 40k units boxed for Kill Team. Yeah. I think that's also partially production problems as well. Um, honestly, I really do think it's a production issue. Like this new one that's coming out is what? Like Night Lords? Yeah, I, Night Lords versus somebody. I don't remember what. Night Lords versus other dudes. Uh, articles, kill team. Night Lords versus. Oh, yeah. Uh, Drakari. Yeah. I'm as interested in the outcome of that battle as much as I'm interested in today's superb owl. Like. Someone asked me just recently. Now, admittedly, I'm not a sports fan, but someone was like, "Hey, who you who you who you hoping for in the uh, Super Bowl?" And I'm like, "Can both teams lose?" But I don't think they can. So, um, yeah, Nightlers versus Drakari. That's that's not for me. Hey, from the UK. Love your chocolatey wargaming voice. Chocolatey is not a term I've heard before, but I appreciate it. Space Station Zero is my uh, gateway drug, and I will 100% get Rain and Hell next because I played Warhammer Fantasy Demons, or sorry, Warhammer 40k Demons, uh, a while, so it's a match. Sure, I, yeah, the, the demons from Warhammer work great in there. I painted up a bunch of different ones um, for a, a, my second or third cabal. Yeah. Excited for like, but excited like for Space Station Zero. I'm for Majestic 13. We got zero minis. So I'd like for a team. Gotcha. What's your thoughts on Risk Legacy? We bought the game. It looks cool. I don't know a ton about it. Um, I do know it's probably one of the first Legacy-style games that was put out there. For those of you who don't know much about board games and such, when risk, when the, the, the idea behind Risk Legacy is that you buy the game and there will be certain times when certain things happen in a game that will trigger you to have to go back into the box and pull out like an envelope, which you will have to open for the first time. It's like glued shut. And there will be like a sticker, let's say, that you now have to put on the board that modifies the board, not just for the rest of this game, but for the next game you play. And then like you're literally things happen during the time that change the board, not just for this game, but for the next time you play and the next time you play. And I've, I think I've read someplace that technically if you play that game like 15 times, then you've used up all the fancy schmancy stuff and there you are. And now the game is done. Like you can keep continue to play, but the board won't change anymore after that. But that's what the idea of these legacy games is. I mean, it's it's an interesting concept. It's also um, capitalism. Like, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I have a suspicion that a lot of these things could be non-destructive. You could instead be like, okay, well, this is what happens. So now you put this card down and it changes things for this game. But next time when you guys play, you don't have to use it again. Maybe that thing happens again. 
but it seems like they're like, no, let's make it so that the game, so you eventually, if you want to keep playing this game, you have to buy another box because eventually you will have screwed up the board so much with all of these weird little special things. It's kind of weird. I don't know. Maybe it's not like that. Like, again, I'm not crazy familiar, but from what I understand, you are changing it. And there is a set number of times that you will probably be able to play the game before you can't make any more changes. Now, the other thing is, is that a lot of board games get bought and played three times or twice or sometimes once or sometimes never at all. So, you know, for the people who are like, well, if I can't play the game 15 times, my question is always like, what was the last game that you've played 15 times? Other than maybe Catan, right? So, um... I don't know. It's it, people have different opinions about it, but it did become a thing for a while because there was also a pandemic legacy. There was a bunch of different such and such legacy games. It's kind of like plus, you know, you had Disney plus and then everybody else's streaming service was something plus maybe Disney. Somebody did plus before Disney. I don't know who started it, but somebody and now it's Paramount plus and it's Warhammer plus. I'm surprised it's not Netflix plus, but Netflix is Netflix, you know, but you see what I'm saying? The concept of Plus means this is premium and you're going to have to pay for it so you can watch the same crap that we've been making for years um, without commercials. Oh, wait, though. <laughs> Let's add in commercials instead. Anywho, that's just my old guy rant for the morning. I got that out of the way, so that's good. Um, aliens, absolutely no problem. There you go. Um, Mulgai, Strabin, and Ock. I, I see those are I was I was dead on. That was perfect. <laughs> I only have like four to six armies to paint. Well, you know, there you go. Hello from Perth, Australia. Love your channel. Always informative and enjoyable to watch. Thanks. I appreciate that, Phil. Gaddis Gaming, how you doing? I've made two commitments this year to paint up all the miniatures in my Marvel Zombies game and to finish all the mar miniatures in my Imperial Salt game. Hopefully nothing new will come out. I'm sure nothing new will come out. You should be fine, Lee. Everything should be good. I'm getting too bright again. Oh, now I'm too dark. That should be okay. Yeah, now the sun's starting to come out. That's... I can see blue sky out that window. Um, we're having our second Winterlude Winter Festival in a row without skating on the... Ch on the, 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 the canal. Can canal. I don't know why I can't say that word today. Canal. There we go. <laughs> Which has always been the biggest part of uh, Winterlude. Well, yeah, no, I mean, like there's supposed to be a big um like ice fishing festival going on i think this weekend and there mm -mm, don't go on the ice right now like normally this time beginning february in the winter there is a foot plus of ice out on the lake you have to if you want to get fish you have to use a big giant honking electric or gas powered drill and drill a foot through ice 12 inches of ice and you're doing that and your car is parked next to you or your giant honking truck is parked next to you on the lake because, yeah, it's fine. You can definitely walk around on the lake. You can drive around on the lake when it is normal winter. But this winter, no, 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 no. There are, there's, first of all, there's a giant open hole in the middle of the lake that's just not frozen. But then even as you get to list of the edges, it's still not safe for vehicles or even in some spots, people. Good morning from Edmonton. About to play my first OPR Regiments game. Nice. Uh, hi from a surprisingly sunny Brigand. Or Brigand? No, I don't think I got either of those right. Um, what are your thoughts on solo war games? Well, Vince and I have made three of them now. So we're pro. We're, 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 on, we're on board. Admittedly, Rain and Hell originally was not solo. Uh, but then it was like the early... Well, it was still, you know, kind of early to mid pandemic days and people were like hey can you make this solo at all possibly and we're like yeah we should have thought of that so we made an expansion for it um called the oculus spear which added solo and co-op um but space station zero uh, majestic 13 those are both solo and co-op plus also versus you can play against your friends if you want to as well um tanks for the apocalypse which was in snarl is not solo or co-op but that's mainly just because that game is designed to be really super short. Like it had to fit in that little zine, which was like 28 pages. Plus there was also other stuff in there, excuse me. And so adding the solo stuff to that game would make it a lot longer of a game. There'd have to be a lot more instructions in there for what the other tanks are doing, the, the, the AI as it were to help run them. Um, so yeah, but our next game coming up this upcoming May 
is also going to have solo and co-op. Basically, everything that we're doing um, going forward, other than like the you know the snarl, the zine games, those will all be pretty much solo and co-op because and also versus, just because it makes sense. It just makes the game more accessible to people who just don't have people to play with or are just trying to learn it or whatever the deal is. There's always something, and so yeah, that's what we we are big fans. It's weird that I'm just now able to reuse some of my models from Kill Team 1 and New Edition scares me. Why not keep the same models? Because uh, line goes up. You got to keep making new models so people have new stuff to buy so that you can uh, make the shareholders happy. Are you still using Agrax Earthshade or do you have a better brown wash? Uh, I use predominantly um, yeah, Strong Tone now from Army Painter. I, just be, I, I, I started using the washes from Army Painter um, before I even joined the factory team with Army Painter because they were in dropper bottles. Like just the, I am pretty much done with and do not like to use pots at all anymore. Everything that I use is, is uh, dropper bottles. And what really helped push me over the edge there um, is the, the fidget popper things, the little silicone fidget poppers, because you can just take your little dropper bottle, which is basically impossible to spill for the most part. Um, and then you can just, you know, put a couple of drops into one of the little uh, you know, upside down bubble things or whatever. And, uh, from there and then just go to town. And so, um, yeah, that's really changed the way that I paint. Like I would say the fidget popper thing has changed the way that I paint nearly as much as the wet palette did when I first started using that. So, um, but a, a big portion of it is just the fact that for me, you know, it's very easy to be able to use washes and speed paints that are in dropper bottles, which is a lot safer. They don't dry out. And when I say safer, I mean, you don't spill them, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, for sure. Let's see here. How much time do Vince and Sam spend painting their own miniatures? Are there armies you play against jaw dropping? Uh, Sam's stuff is always amazing. I, if I, I don't know that Vince and I ever played. Well, other than play testing, we've never played a game like where I brought my models and he brought his. Well, I take that back. When we were play testing. No, we weren't playtesting Tanks of the Apocalypse. We were just playing it at VinciCon because it had already come out in November. We were just playing it, um, and I then had painted tanks, and I brought my tanks along, and we were playing there. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, those guys both are amazing painters for sure. Like Vince, and I think he did a video about this a while back. He showed, like, he's got all these cabinets, all these big display cases in his basement, just army after army after army after army after army, and it's amazing. Um, it... Sam doesn't have as many of those display cabinets, but like I've been playing against Sam for years and everything he brings out is always astounding. So yeah, for sure. Uh, in the military, a hat is a cover. Hmm, weird. Depends on the branch of the service, but I recall cover equaling hat. Interesting. Canadians used to call their steel helmets tin hats. Not made out of tin. That's weird. Anyway, I like to do something to distinguish the squad <clears throat> squads to keep it from being too monotonous and to avoid having to put water slide decals on everything. Uh, water slide decals on certain things can be a real pain. I'm getting better at it, but still mostly on vehicles. One of these days, I'm going to have to try mastering how to do it on like Space Marine shoulder pads or something like that. And I, I rue. I rue the day. Um... Some branches of the UK military, they call hats bins. Huh. They should do a Tyranid kill team box set with scenery like Galadark, but Hive Fleet, uh, like an advanced space crusade, but kill team. Interesting. Kind of cool. Um, I'm from Worcester, and you uh, nailed pronouncing it. I mean, well, <laughs> I think I screwed it up right there, but that's fine. Even if it's a soft hat, not a helmet, so, um, soldiers don't call them hats. It's now a cover. It's weird. Why not hat? Why, why cover instead of hat? That's a strange... Hello, Molly. How you doing? Um, I think big army games tap into the type of wargamer that would happily imagine themselves as uh, Saruman wave, waving regally at legions of massed Uruk High from a tall balcony. Unfortunately, that's me. There's nothing wrong with it. I don't... I, I'm like, for me, it's not... It's It's... I like to focus on the smaller groups, both in the hobby and the painting, being able to spend more time per model. And also, um, I like to be able to get done with it and get onto other groups as well. Even though I may be spending more time, I'm still not as spending as much time as I would if I had to paint an entire army of those guys. Um, and then also for me too, a big deal is I really enjoy 
um, not having to control so many, like, and the games themselves are smaller and shorter and sometimes more simple and all that kind of stuff. So for me, skirmish is, is a thing, definitely. Good morning from Osceola. How you doing? Being a winner is for losers. Nice. JP Got Rockets, how you doing? Desktop too occupied by model railway buildings to make any minis. Anyway, it's too late at night. Sure, I get that. The bigger the army, the smaller the minis. There's a reason NATO games agreed on 6mm for their standard wargaming scale. Gotcha. Do you enjoy the building and painting more? Is it? Do I enjoy building or painting more? Um, I th think I enjoy painting more. I'm trying to finish stripping old Blood Bowl minis so I can paint them for play. Nice. Warhammer Old World now with Storm Bros and Space Marines. GW missed quite a chance to sell that game. I mean, it's, you're not wrong. While I'm at work in Kansas City. Well, how you doing? Morning from Chattanooga. Finally, some decent priming weather, so I just primed some Battletech minis. Nice. I like building more than painting, but the new monopose GW minis make conversions harder and less fun. I really do enjoy painting, but army painting build burns me out quickly. I hear a lot of people complain about monopose minis, and I don't mind them, but I'm also, again, usually not trying to build an army. And when you're building an army, if you've got in every squad guys who all look exactly the same in these kind of weird poses, like, you know, like you've got, let's say you had orc commandos the new orc commandos they did for kill team, and you were going to put those into your 40k army or whatever, and you had three squads of them or something like that, like, you'd be like, oh, there's that guy again. Oh, there's that guy again. Oh, there's, you know what I mean? Because they're in those poses or whatever, or wearing the outfits and all that kind of jazz. Um, so I can see that there. But really, in the old days, the, the posable models weren't all that posable. You know what I mean? Like the Space Marines, specifically, people were like, oh, the old Space Marines are better because they're posable. I'm like, I mean... You could kind of turn their head a little bit. You could make their gun leader do this or this a little bit. You could turn the torso. Like, they weren't, like, super posable where you could make them look like they were doing the robot or whatever. I mean, they were just kind of, like, a little bit more wiggly, I guess. I don't know. Um, I the, the benefit to monopose is that you can make a more dynamic sculpt. You can make them doing something really cool. But the problem is if you need six of them, then it's six guys doing the exact same cool thing. And then it becomes less cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. One of the reasons that I do like, you know, stuff like War Games Atlantic models, um, you know, stuff from like companies like Anvil Industry and things like that is because they are sort of posable. But... For me, honestly, it's not even so much that they're posable. It's just like that extra set of arms, I'm going to go put that on something else. You know what I mean? Like it's more for kit bashing purposes, specifically with um, with uh, War Games Atlantic is uh, definitely is a situation where they're like, you know, in that box or in the same with like Stargrave and Frostgrave minis. I'm like, I've got so many extra model bits in those boxes. Like these guys I just showed you from Cromlech earlier in the show. Where are we at? Okay. These uh, Cromlech, um, well, you, it's just a mass of stuff in there. But there's some little kind of Imperial Guard type folks. They're Imperial Guard adjacent, right? They're not knockoffs necessarily, but they're just cool kind of sci-fi sort of soldier dudes. They don't have any arms or heads. They're just torsos and, and um, legs. But I can take... Um, Stargrave minis, I can take uh, minis from other companies like, again, like War Games Atlantic. And in those things, on a sprue, you might have five bodies, but you've got 20 heads and you've got, you know, 10 sets of arms or whatever. So you've always got extra bits. And so that's what I kind of dig. Um, I feel lucky that I have zero connection to the nostalgia of old Warhammer properties. I definitely don't see the value of paying 200 or two, paying... I thought it was $2,024. No, $2,024 for 10-year-old models. Oh, if they were only 10 years old. Honestly, those skeletons are old enough to drink. Like, if you look at some of those sprues, they are from 20, 20 they're from 2002. Some of those the, some of those sprues are from 2002, 2003. So that they're old enough to drink legally. So. Have you tried any of the five something to something games? Um, five parsecs from home, yes. Uh, five leagues in the Borderlands, no. And then there's like several others, but uh, five five parsecs is a cool game. And I also like the fact that it can be solo as well. 
or it's mainly solo really um i thought kumani or not was started by the people that did new wave hobby who were not great and went down in flames or bought that business to turn i'm not exactly sure how it all started like i said i know it started as a website and then another group either bought the website or was partnering with them and was selling hobby stuff and then eventually this other company and then there was zombicide and then here we are today Greetings from Farmington Hills, Michigan. I really miss the old Kumani or Not shop as that was my favorite online mini shop back in the day. Interesting. Hmm. I really want the This Quar's War Box. I spent a good amount of time yesterday trying to find out what a Quar actually is. Like they're just, like I said, these little guys. You know what I mean? They're just these little um, little bipedal uh, anteater-y looking guys. One thing I like about Kumani or Not games is no assembly, so just prime and paint. They're coming out with a skirmish Game of Thrones, but the shipping for the GameFound campaign is insane. I think I heard that. I think I saw somebody else complaining about that too, but I guess it depends on where you're shipping to. Like if you're shipping to, I know someone was recently was like going on about how crazy the shipping was, but then they were like, but I'm in Australia. And I'm like, well, that is the other side of the planet from probably where they're coming from. They, as a company that big, should be sending out to distribution points, in my opinion. If you're a company that big, Cool Mini's pretty big. And if you're going to have a big, huge, giant game found Kickstarter or whatever you're going to do, and then you're going to be like, yeah, but if you want it in Australia, it's going to cost as much as the game costs to get it shipped there because we're going to ship it from Cleveland or whatever. Well, okay, that's maybe unreasonable. When you're a big, when you're a little company, it's, it is what it is. When you're a big company, you should be able to ship a whole buttload of those things to like Perth and then have them leave Perth and go to other places within Australia or whatever but they don't seem like they're interested in doing that. I feel like as a company, they're trying to do the bare minimum to get the most profit, which is what most companies do, but it's like they're showing it more <laughs> than they used to. And the whole fact that they're just like, well, we're just going to give it to the post office here in the States and see if they can get it to Australia or not. And it's going to cost a lot of money. That seems like it's real low effort on my part. Um... Let's see. I remember seeing the 15 millimeter quar stuff on blogs back in the aughts. Oh, yeah. No, it's been around for a while, for sure. Picked this day for eating a whole cookie jar worth of doggy Oreos. Oh, I'm picked on to this day for eating a whole. Were you like a little kid, I'm assuming? I hope. Dad was always on some health food kicks, so off-flavored cookies weren't unusual around the house. Okay, well, that's also an explanation as well. That's fine. Um... What are your thoughts on the new Song of Ice and Fire Tactics skirmish game? I'd be interested in taking a look at it. Like, I don't really have any uh, attachment to the book series. My wife has read them all. We watched the Game of Thrones TV show. I gave up somewhere around sixth season and was like, ah, it's fine. And then she watched the last two and was like, yeah, she's kind of a completionist. She likes to watch till the end. And I, I am definitely, I will definitely pull the pull the the shoot and be like nope i'm done like real early sometimes on shows like oh this is like because anytime someone tells me it really takes until third season till the show gets better then i'm like then they should have started there i just i don't get the whole concept of like let's sit through two seasons or even an entire season or even a half a season yeah this first half of the season is trash but then eventually it gets good <sighs> well anyway i'm just not a big fan of watching seasons of television i like movies better um they're done quicker are frequent new additions or versions good for the hobby? No. Straight up, no. I do not think that they are. Um, they're good for hobby businesses, some of them, uh, which sometimes translates into being good for the hobby. But uh, no, I don't think they are. I think they're a bad idea. What's it spelled? Qua? Quar. Uh, Q-U-A-R. It's this Quar's War. Oh, there you go. This Quar's War, Clash of Rifles. 80 bucks due to be released uh, on February 23rd. There you go. Um, I bought the Quar Roller Rules from Wargames Vault years ago, and I too want plastic minis for that. Yeah, yeah. The evolved ant eaters that are the Quar remind me of the worms from the computer game. Yeah, I could see that. There's a uh, Mantic did a worms board game from the computer game, I'm pretty sure. Dark Age had cool minis. I missed out on them. They're all but vanished since the plague. Yeah. I like the Wrath Kings myself. It was my favorite Star Trek movie. Wait, what? No, that's Wrath of Khan. Totally different thing. Um, does anyone have the new War Games Atlantic Skeleton Cavalry box set yet? Looks nice. Skeleton Cav. I don't think I've seen that. Interesting. 
Uh, let's see here. John Ashley Smith, how you doing? Go for it painting. Howdy. It's important for GW to fire their fans. Does seem to be the case, yeah. Upstate New York, how you doing? Um, why change perfection? I mean, well, what is your opinion of the Cyberpunk Red Combat Zone? I am trying to find time to finish uh, building the models, and then I want to paint them, and I want to speed paint them. Like, I definitely want to use, like, um, enamel wash. I'm kind of hoping I can get them all put together and base, like, base, you know, uh, just flat colors. And then hopefully my, uh, I ordered this stuff. It, they did their own kind of like crowdfund. It wasn't like GameFound or Kickstarter or any of those other companies. They just sort of did their own internal thing. Um, what's the name of the, I don't know if I can pr properly, Zaskatoon? Zaskat it's the Grimdark Compendium. If you look up Grimdark Compendium on YouTube, you will find, uh, or on you know Google, you'll find their website. Um, Zats, Zas Cats, it's, it's a really long, crazy name, and I don't know if it's Canadian, maybe? Uh, anyway, um, kind of reminds me of Saskatchewan, but it starts with Z. Anyway, um, he came up with these, this line of, um, enamel washes, which he calls Villainy Ink, uh, and he did this sort of, like, like I said, his own crowdfunding thing to basically fund, and this is crazy, like, he has the machines for bottling the stuff in-house now. Like, they, this, you know, semi-truck rolled up, and they moved these machines into a shed or whatever like that, and you see, like, the bottles are going through the machine, you know, and then the, mm, the stuff gets squirted in there, and the top gets screwed on all automatically, and the label printer is putting the label. So, yeah, he's he's gone hardcore. Um, he's not, like, doing this on his kitchen, uh, you know, counter. Um, anyway, the last kind of hurdle was they were trying to get the safety data sheets or whatever the material safety data sheets all finalized so they could ship the stuff and um so i should be getting that enamel wash a set of enamel washes in a bunch of different colors soon and my hope is to use those probably the first project i use them on other than basically just doing a test to make sure they're not like trash or whatever um but i want to use those on the uh, combat zone guys from um uh monster fight club so yeah, I have, I have the starter box, and I got a couple of side stuff, but a couple of side boxes like tigers maybe and cops maybe I don't know. But I, I I've just I've so far I've only I haven't finished building, but I've started building the two different forces that came in the original starter box. But it's a cool game. It's a very cool game. I hope Kill Team doesn't return to a points list building. I'm fairly certain they will not do that. I think the only thing that will really do is refine the line of sight rules. I, well, I mean, you know, I then I still won't play because it's I, their their current list building is trash, in my opinion. Again, this is my opinion. Uh, other people like it. It seems to be doing okay, but I think it's in comparison specifically to War to to Warcry, it's just dumb. Like, why is it Warcry can be just fine? and be a fine game when you can take whatever the heck you want, as long as it comes up to a thousand points. You need a leader and then everybody else, but like you can't do that in Kill Team. And really, Kill Team, the new version of Kill Team is based off of Warcry, so that doesn't make any sense either, you know what I mean? It's just very strange to me. Um. Let's see. Never even bought second edition kill team, and now I'm just getting rid of first ed. I've had enough. Yeah, I understand that too. Again, if you want to play kill team and the kill team is too much or kill team isn't cool, just go get Grimdark Future Firefight from uh, One Page Rules. Grimdark Future Firefight. So there's Grimdark Future, which is their kind of 40K, 40K style game in that it is army based. It's like moving around squads of dudes and you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, Grimdark Future Firefight is their sci-fi skirmish game. So it's kind of like um, Kill Team. But it's got a great online list builder. Uh, it has... It's the best online list builder out there. It's better than anything else that Games Workshop puts out easily as far as any kind of... Uh, like their app or any kind of jazz like that. You build what you want. You print out a piece of paper that has all the stats on it and all the special rules on it. So you don't have to go, oh, this guy's got this go dig up the book and figure out what the heck that means again. I've forgotten. It's just right there on the sheet. They want to make things easy for you. So yeah, definitely go check that out if you're interested in Kill Team, but not interested in Kill Team. You know what I mean? 
wasn't there like a 2004 version of Kill Team? Like I said, there used to be Kill Team did not start in 2018, but Kill Team as a standalone game started in 2018. Previous versions of Kill Team were all like, you already needed to have the 40k rules and the codex you needed, and then this little packet, which I remember one of them being literally like a 12-page booklet, uh, told you how to build, using the main rulebook and the codex, how to build yourself a Kill Team and fight against other people's Kill Teams, and it had some skirm- uh, some uh, scenarios in there and stuff like that in there. So yeah, Kill Team as a concept has been around for a while, but it always required that you had keeps doing that whenever i give the thumbs up it does the it's a it's it's a mac thing um anyway um whenever that you do that whenever you 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 know the old version was not standalone it wasn't until 2018 when the standalone version came out um i can also do what else can i do here it's really cool um i can also do uh this that's fun yeah i don't know why but i can uh, I can, I can get up here in the club, do that. I don't know why. It's just fun. Anyway, um, but if I give thumbs up on screen, it automatically then makes a little weird bubble. I don't, anyway, um, Necromunda 2017 is a board game. The 20, or the 1995 version is vastly superior. I mean, that's again, a personal opinion thing, uh, and I'm not going to begrudge you your personal opinion, but... Um, you're not totally wrong. Let's just say that when I was very disappointed when the original, uh, Necromunda 2017 came out because it did not have rules for three dimensional play. And it was just designed to be played on that board that came in the box. And I was like, what? And then they came out with like the gang war supplement, which then added that stuff. So I, I get what you're saying, but. I love the concept of Necromunda. I have no interest in playing it because it is so, so super in-depth and also spread all over the place in multiple books. And they've tried to make, like they did make a new book sort of recently-ish that was like, this is everything all in one book. And you're like, cool. And they're like, we made five of them. And you're like, wait, what? And it, like you can't get it now. And you're like, so uh, just in case, if you're interested in doing something like that, Take a look at One Page Rules Gang War. If you're looking for something to do with your Necromunda models, uh, go go look up Gang War. Just, you know, FYI. My frustration with Kill Team is mostly uh, new team releases wind up being bought up by 40k players, and it takes six months for Kill Team players to pick up a box or two like the Caster Kit. Yep, that, that happened a lot. <laughs> that happened a lot. Yep. Kill Team and Warcry should be uh, five to ten year new editions and yearly annual books to keep things fresh. How fresh do we have to keep things? You know what I mean? Like, I I really, I push back a little bit on the concept that you have to be making these new books all the time. Um, I feel that the reason that people are like, I need this, like, if they don't make a new book every six months or something like that, then the game is dead. It's because those people only play one game. Um, you know, like Vince and I make new books every year, but each of them is a different game. We don't like, we didn't make up like, cause people asked us like right after our first game came out, right after rain and hell came out, they're like, when's the first expansion? And we're like, we don't have any plans for an expansion. They're like, oh, so the game is dead. And we're like, wait, what? No, you can still buy it today. That game came out three years ago. You can still buy it today. It's still in stock. Cause it's never not out. It's not never, it's never not in stock. Be, you're not, it's never out of stock because it's print on demand. So you'll be able to get it as much as you want. Or if you just want to buy the PDF, you'll get it instantly, which is way faster than you're getting anything from games workshop. So, um, yeah, the whole concept of just like, well, we've got to keep putting stuff out to keep it fresh. Try a different game, you know, or try a different army or, you know, but, but yeah, like I, I, I push back against the concept that I have to buy all new bo- uh, rules or even a new rule add-on or a new rule, you know, scenario, but like all that, eh, I don't know. And a, a, a big portion of that too, especially with something like um, Majestic 13 and something also like, uh, specifically like Majestic 13 definitely and Space Station Zero to a degree, our games, is that the campaign 
for for Space Station Zero, there are a total of 24 different possible missions, challenges is what they're called, that you could take. And it's a branching narrative. So you do number one first, and then you, you know, maybe on some of them you roll to see what the next one is, and other ones you pick. And it's a kind of a, we're not going to say choose your own adventure because those guys are incredibly litigious. It is definitely a branching narrative as you go through. And you could play it multiple times and then eventually be like, oh, I've already played this scenario once. That's fine. One of the things we did with Majestic 13 is that the scenarios are kind of random, like in a not like, oh, here's a scenario, like the parts of it are kind of kind of like you do that with um, they did that with uh, they the, the they've done it in a bunch of different things, but they definitely like got my attention with it in the first edition of Warcry because you would have those decks of cards. Here's the deployment. Here's the victory conditions. Here's the twist, you know, that kind of stuff. So the missions were all kind of randomized that way. And we do that same type of thing to some degree with uh, Majestic 13, which is great. And it also makes things fresh and blah, blah, blah. So, um, yeah, but the, the concept that we like, well, we got to come up with a new book every year. Otherwise, it's not fresh anymore. I'm, I, uh, I don't know. Because the problem is then the books disappear or, well, they also, the books become useless. Like I got a basement full of books from GW that are useless because they, you know, I, oh, it's the codex from two, from two editions ago. How old is that book? 20 years old? No, five, five years old. It's useless twice. You know what I mean? Like it just, I don't know. It drives me a little nuts. And honestly, your lips to God's ears about uh, Kill Team and Warcry. I think all their games should be five years. I think that 40K should be five years. I think, uh, you know, at least five years in between editions as opposed to this three years shenanigans. That's that's crazy. I just hope that Legion's Imperialis isn't going to get a totally unnecessary new edition every three years. Uh, we'll see. Because it's kind of a, you know, boxed game or what they used to call specialist game, it may not, but... I guess it depends on how popular it is. If it's popular, then it will. Kill Team is not an intro game to 40k. It is only easier to get into because of the model count. That's true. I agree. Uh, but I see so many 40k players and people in general that struggle to wrap their head around line of sight rules. Yeah, no, from what I understand, uh, it, the, the, and it seems like, from what I understand, like initially I was like, these don't make nearly as much sense as they used to. And I think that everything they've added to it, like especially with the gallo dark stuff you know with all that they added like every one of those terrain boxes that came out one of those quarterly boxes would then have new like oh this is really how it's supposed to work and it's just like they muddied the water more and more it seemed like and it was not great um greece in the frozen desert in henderson nevada absolutely I don't know how much you know about Magic, but Wizards of the Coast leaned into the casual commander format versus standard and their competitive formats years ago, and look how big they've grown. Oh, yeah, like, they don't... My local shop, um, they don't really run Friday Night Magic anymore. They haven't since pre-pandemic. Uh, people still show up on a Friday night and hang out and play, but they just play commander. Like, nobody plays, like... What do they call it? Um, modern? Is that what... I don't, I don't I don't know a ton about it, but I do know from talking to my friend who owns a game store, he told me that Friday Night Magic died before the pandemic in his store. Just people don't come in to play with their DCI numbers and all that kind of stuff anymore. They just come in and play um, on that. And honestly, he says he gets more people on Saturday that come in and play all day. Um, but it's always Commander. Like, nobody plays anything else at the store anymore these days other than Commander. So that's interesting, too. Yeah, exactly. Competitive is easy money for GW. You get the comp players chasing meta. Yeah, but there's not that many competitive players in comparison. That's the thing. Like, it seems like it's really trying to go to smaller portion of their their um, their audience. I don't know. Um, cloudy and humid in Harlington, Texas. Nice. Warcry seems very cool, but getting the Chaos Warband seems needlessly difficult. I mean, getting anything from GW these days seems needlessly difficult. The Nurgle Warcry army is amazing. So much detail. Yeah. Late Pledge. That's what I was looking for. Did you ever play Confrontation? I didn't. I've seen the models, but I've never played it. Song of Ice and F I did play AT43, though, which is by the same company, a French company called Rackham. Uh, Song of Ice and Fire minis are fun to paint, and those boxes aren't GW expensive. Th that is, the, the, they're not GW expensive. I know that to be true, but I have not tried painting any of them. Uh, uh, Sam painted a bunch of them, and I've also watched James Wapple paint them, sometimes even in person. I was at a convention in Madison, Wisconsin, Game Hole Con, years ago, pre-pandemic, and he was there and was painting a bunch of the Song of Ice and Fire uh, minis, and they looked, of course, gorgeous, because he's, he's, he's James Wapple. Um, 
Necromunda changes every 18 months or so, and they revamp the house gangs at one, one per quarter, had three versions of each. I do know that they come up with those extra books all the time, and I'm just like, so is this a new thing? Do I have to have this? Do I only have to have this if I play this army? Like, I feel sometimes also as if GW is able to make extra money because they don't make things make sense. Like, I've heard time and time and time and time again from people who like, I don't know how to start playing, which is why Combat Patrol kind of came around. But I think that they kind of make some money by you not understanding how to start playing because you then end up buying a book or two that you didn't need to or an army or a box or two that you didn't need to. If they made a very simple PDF that says, first you need this, then you need this, then you need this, it would do two things. Number one, it would scare some people away because they'd be like, mm -hmm, I don't think so. Uh, but on the second hand, it would also make some other people who are definitely going to get involved no matter what realize they don't need to buy as much stuff as they thought they needed to. And both of those things seem to be bad for GW, which is why we don't see them making a very specific, here is a PDF that tells you how to get into our game. And they just don't want to seem to do that. So I've heard time and time again from folks that are just like, I don't know what it is that I'm supposed to do to get started. And like I said, Combat Patrol helps that. But I feel like they maybe don't push it enough. They should. They should really be, like, it's in the the... The main book. If you buy the big, thick core book, it tells you in there, if you want to get into 40K, start here. And that's good, but you've already bought that book. What if you don't plan on buying that book? You know what I mean? So I feel like there's a lot of things that you need to have already known <laughs> to get into 40K sometimes. And that's the way they sort of do it. So anyway, I am way behind. I just saw somebody type in Gesundheit, which means I, how long ago was that I, I snozed? sneezed you know what i'm saying anyway um it is 11 o'clock in my neck of the woods so i'm gonna have to go and find out um how rex is doing he probably is asleep by now usually around 10 30 he finally tires himself out so he's probably sleeping in a chair somewhere so um there's that but um yeah so we'll keep an eye out about kill team the question at this point in my mind is will they announce it at Adepticon, or will they just announce Age of Sigmar 4 and then wait and announce Kill Team later? Or will they announce Age of Sigmar 4 and tease Kill Team? Or will they decide not to make a new edition of Kill Team this year? That seems odd, but it's a possibility, I guess, maybe. It seems odd. Anyway, uh, I want to thank everybody for coming by today and hanging out. Uh, I hope that if you were able to uh, be doing some painting or hobbying while you were listening, I hope you got some things done. I hope I was able to help with that. Um, I'll be back, like I said, on Twitch tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Central. So if you're not following me on Twitch already, you can just go follow me at, right down uh, here, uh, Tabletop Minions on Twitch. Uh, and then uh, you'll get a notification when I go live. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, 7 p.m. tomorrow, uh, Central Time. And I'm going to continue working on some Stargrave minis that I'm got working on. They're uh, scavengers from Stargrave, and they kind of just look like tall Jawas is what we've decided. So, you know, we're going to work on the tall Jawa crew and see where that goes and um, and go from there. So, again, thanks to everybody for coming by and hanging out and chatting, and um, I will see you again here on this very channel live in another two weeks. And, uh, yeah, have yourselves a good day, and thanks for watching. <laughs>